At the outset, let me express my appreciation to all of you for your presence this morning. I would also like to apologize for not meeting all of you earlier. Let me say firstly, Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, most gracious, most merciful that I am here today amongst you as a free man. I have spent the last 22 months in prison and it was the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my firm belief in my innocence and the support given by my family and close friends that have helped me through what I would describe as the most stressful, anxious and sad period of my 48 years of existence. Words will never ever be enough to describe and reflect my deepest appreciation to my family who have stood by me throughout these difficult times. It was their love and dedication in abundance that have given me the strength to pull through. Every Saturday without fail, my family would come and visit me during the allowed weekly visitation. A total of well over 100 times they turn up and their visit was the highlight of my week. I have been most fortunate. It is perhaps human nature that when someone is in trouble, people shy away. I expected this and true enough, this human nature never fails. I spent two Hari Rayas in prison. Prior to my imprisonment during the Hari Raya festive season, I would receive hundreds of cards. For the last two years, surprise, surprise, I received a total of no more than 20. To those who have sent their best wishes to my family and the very few who turn up in court, I would just like to say thank you. Your presence and support meant a lot to me and my family. My special thanks also go to all my lawyers who not only have worked hard on my case, but also have come and visited me in prison. During the Second World War, not that I was around, when soldiers found themselves as prisoner of wars, it was their duty to escape. Obviously, to escape never crossed my mind, but I still escaped, for my mind was always free. One could physically be in prison, but one's mind can never be in captivity. My family, my close friends, my lawyers and my books have all added my escape, for my mind was never incarcerated. This, to me, was my great escape. Most people tend to have a narrow and negative perception of prison and its authorities. However, I would like to say here, it is never an easy job and generally I find that the prison authorities demonstrated a high degree of professionalism. My appreciation goes to them. Finally, I would like to say thank you to my fellow inmates. They helped me to get through prison life, for among other things, they showed much kindness. I would like to take this opportunity to wish them the very best of luck. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, no words will ever be enough to reflect or describe the ordeal that my family have had to endure these last two years. Ever since my arrest in November 2006, much has been said by so many. Lies and baseless assumptions became the basis of so-called truth, and the real truth has become irrelevant and lost in translation. It seems that no one is interested anymore in knowing the truth. Some quarters have made concerted efforts to twist and turn the story into a reservoir of gibberish and garbage. The lies quickly overtook the truth. As Shakespeare in Henry IV said, a lie is halfway round the world before the truth has got its boots on. I must admit that I was rather shocked to see the extent of how my case was how my case has been widely exaggerated and how the ignorant have taken center stage and managed to pull the wool over the eyes of so many people. Many have jumped on the bandwagon of skullduggery. The innocents have become the victim while the liars are running supreme. People have become so gullible and they believe what they want to believe irrespective of the truth. I know and I'm fully aware there will always be cynics and manipulators out there to ridicule and to falsely what I have to say even today. 
I am caught in the damn if you do and damn if you don't situation. Some have advised me to say nothing as the effort will be futile. They argue that whatever I say would not make any difference as people will prefer to keep to their own interpretations in spite of the truth. Even after the truth is revealed, such people will have their own explanation. It appears to be unwinnable. However, I feel that if I do not brave myself and try to turn the tide in order to tell the truth, then I will be merely turning a blind eye and indeed allow the liars to prevail. To me, to be indifferent is to be responsible. If I may be allowed to paraphrase Martin Luther, here I stand, I can do no other. So help me God. Members of the media, I implore all of you and the public to stop spreading lies about Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak, the Deputy Prime Minister and his wife. I know that Datuk Najib and his wife had never met the deceased. So much fitna has been thrown towards the DPM and his wife. Those who have spread such lies can never produce any authentic evidence because simply there are none. The truth is the truth and nothing can ever change the truth. As you can appreciate, the trial as well as other related court proceedings is still ongoing. So I have been advised by my lawyers not to touch specifically on my case, mainly to preserve the sanctity of the trial. Last but not least, I, will, I would like to say here once again, Alhamdulillah, shukur to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for reaffirming and fortifying my innocence through the courts. I would also like to emphasize that I did not commit any offense in respect of the deceased. Nevertheless, I would like to express my deepest sympathies to the family of the deceased for their loss. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Well, you know, the press, the media, the bloggers and the men in the street have described my relationship with Najib in all forms, from a close aide, a close friend, an associate, an advisor. You know, if in jest I would say, why don't you take your pick and, you know, and, and to my relationship with Dato Sri Najib has evolved over the years. I there obviously was a professional relationship um, and, um, and uh, this goes back as early as the 1990s and having known him professionally um, I also got to know him personally.